we're changing band nice people out, in and out. If anybody else has any other memories or they'd like to say, yes, sir, please. I would like to try to say something. Um, a lot like Rob Gold, who I just met today, I know sticks to uh, the same mutual friend, David, David Goldberg here, uh, had the opportunity, privilege, and honor to play with him for quite a while. Sticks, now for me, playing in, in this band, one of my ongoing complaints throughout is that the drummers we tend to find play ridiculously loud. They have two dynamics, ridiculously loud and are you kidding me loud? <laughs> and this guy over here, oh my god, I bow to all of you. Unbelievable. <laughs> he knows what dynamics are. And for the musicians who play with a drummer who understands dynamics, you get to hear the music. Uh, when a drummer doesn't uh, know dynamics, the musicians don't hear each other, and the audience certainly doesn't hear anything. Uh, these guys really know dynamics. We're in a little room here, and you hear every note. It's unbelievable, you know. Uh, and Sticks provided that. And that's a unique quality, I find, because we have trouble finding musicians who understand that. <laughs> and uh, again, these guys are amazing, and so was Sticks, and uh, that's all I'm doing. You know, it's, it's funny to me to hear that about drummers, because all the drummers that I know, they know dynamics, but they'd rather play loud. <laughs> Isn't that right? No, no, we won't get into names right now, but um, we'll, con we'll continue our phenomenal surge of talent here in Sticks' is honor. So much for dynamics. Ted, don't you worry about dynamics. <laughs>
see, I can guarantee you that Styx is looking down here and smiling big, man. Yeah. It really yeah. is. That's one of his favorite tunes, right? <laughs> any more, any more stories? Yeah, Memories, yes. Come on, girl, get up here. <laughs> I know about this because everyone was noticing how much the boys and Keith looked alike. <laughs> they got some nice suits on too. And of course they had nice suits on. <laughs> Jimmy particularly hates that picture. <laughs> some Denny But I made them. I made them wear funny clothes. <laughs> But I just have to tell you that people always comment about how much they look alike, Keith and the boys. And someone asked Teresa one time, well, how did y'all find somebody to fit in so well? <laughs> she said, oh, we just searched and searched and looked and looked and we found just the right one. <laughs> That's all. Ruby, we had about, we, I think we had six different changes of jumpsuits. Yeah and shirts yeah. and you had to we had to kind of ruby would call everybody up tell them what color we were wearing that night what shirt mm -hmm. we had a couple of musicians that could not get to the job with the right shirt and the right outfit on it yeah. then we switched finally switched to tuxedos and had the same problem with tuxedos I, I don't know if you remember but you want to spend an entertaining evening we had them over to our house with some friends one night and they brought all their scrapbooks and of course, after a few rum and cokes and whatever we were doing, uh, we were at it for hours looking at all the transitions of how much these guys have done. But you got another tune while you got Ted up there or what? Yeah, yeah, you can't do smooth. Well, you want me to continue on with some memories because I think we're kind of getting into the mode now. Here we are. I don't know that. I think they're going to sing. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know that. Any other memories? <laughs> Tony, Tony Belmont. <laughs> I just have a, a short short story to tell. My company's Allen Free Productions. We go back to the very beginning of rock and roll. Over the last half century, I think I've uh, done thousands of concerts and managed many, many of the great groups. So when I first saw Ruby and Keith, which was a long time ago, I think Keith was still showing his driver's license to get a beer. Uh, I needed musicians, so whenever I needed musicians around the area, I would, I would call Keith. But we were going to do a show over at Clearwater, Clearwater Beach, and I had four bands playing that night, four groups, and um, I, Andy was, uh, he recommended Andy. I had never worked with Andy before at that time, and he came to, uh, to play with one of the bands. Well, the last minute, the, the drummer from the Drifters band, sick, couldn't, couldn't play. So I asked Andy, I said, Andy, you think you can do this? You know, you, the guy is sick. I mean, he was doing this without a rehearsal, and I was a little nervous about it. And Andy said, yeah, I, I can do it. They play rock and roll. And he says, I'm rock and roll. I can play it. And I says, okay. I said, yeah, you, you sure now? I said, this is the Drifters, uh, the original world famous Drifters. And he saw that concern in me and he said, uh, he says, yeah, I can do it. He said, I'll tell you what, Mr. Belmont, if I can't do it, you don't have to pay me at the end of the night. And I said, really? He said, no, not really. <laughs> so, what are you crazy? He said, I'm just saying that to make you feel good. <laughs> but, but in closure, uh, I think I managed a group a long time ago called the Rascals. And uh, when I managed them, they were the young Rascals. The drummer's name was Dino Dinelli, and Dino was a great drummer. And Dino said to me once, he said, you know, the most important person in the band is the drummer. I said, well, you're just saying that because you, you are the drummer. And he says, no, the drummer makes you tap your feet. It makes you feel good and you leave happy. And I think, uh, I think that fit Andy. He was the drummer, he made you tap your feet, made you feel good. And when you left, you felt happy, you know. So I think we'll all miss Andy, but he always made, it, made us happy. And that's, that's all you can do in this life is make other people happy. Thank you.
Well, James Brown said, if the drummer's not on, you can send the rest of the band home. <laughs> we got Miss uh, Dula Kanata here. She's going to sing a acapella version. Oh, the last time we worked together, I know that I sang the song and you liked it. You liked my arrangement. And I don't know how else to approach it other than just a cappella because I'm going to have to drop my keys. We don't know After working five minutes.
wonder why I'm always dressed in black I never have bright colors on my back Why does my appearance seem to have a somber tone There's a reason for the things that I have on I wear the black for the poor and the beaten down Living in the hopeless, hungry side of town I wear the black in mourning for the lives that could have been Each day we lose a hundred five young men I wear it for the sick and the lonely old For the reckless one whose bad trip left him cold And I wear it for the thousands who have died Believing that the Lord was on their side I wear it for the hundred thousand poor who have died Believing that we all were on their side Well, there's something who'll never be right, I know And things ain't changing everywhere you go Said I knew you 
One more last call if anybody has anything else left to say, uh, got, another memory. I know. Carol Sunday, she's thought of a tune to do. You got another tune to do? Yeah. I didn't mean a last call for music, I meant a last call for memories. See, you're interrupting the MC again. He was always good at doing that. So while they're figuring that out, as I was saying, anybody else? Sir, please. Hey, quiet down over there, will you? <laughs> My name is Wes, and uh, Andy spent the last year with me. I met Andy at a rehearsal, and I said, man, this guy is good. <laughs> And he was the only person I have, the person who could say y'all better than anybody else. <laughs> As a northerner who loves the South, I appreciated him. And we did the Diamonds gig together, and he was powerful. I got to play the last gig with him, and his skills did not diminish. He wanted to play that gig, and he hurt a lot. And I said, Andy, are you sure? He said, I have to do it. And if you watch the video, he was, you know, he kept it together on the stage. He came to my house. I met him at a rehearsal in 2011, and I said, this guy's good. And I called him one night, and I said, Andy, I've got a leak, and I'm scared because musicians aren't that good at this stuff. He came to my house, and at 8.30 at night, he was working in the mud. And he stayed until it was done. He came to my, in back in my life around a year and a half ago, he said, Wes, I have cancer. I need a place to live, a quiet place. I said, come in. But the main thing was, you have to be at home. Because I knew he needed a quiet place to heal. And he, he helped me with my house. He took a palm tree from the back of my house and moved it to the front. This man was showing me, I guess, in living ways. He painted my house and I got to watch this expertise that he had. And he, he taught me a lot, not just about patience and discipline, but about courage. And I talked to him a lot in the last year, and he described people here that I don't know. We, we're both musicians of the road, and we, I knew I was with my own. And that's all I have to say, it's other than I, I don't know him that well because I just came into his life in 2011. But I felt like I really got to share a lot of time, and there are people in this room, if I meet them later, I've already heard about you. That's what it's all about, just saying what you feel. Keith, shall we? We'll do one more closing thing, and then the rest can be music. Yes, dear Ruth. I just want to say that 
I just can't tell you how much I feel that Andy is just right here loving each and every person that's here and just loving you guys so much for being a wonderful, fabulous musicians and people that you are. And I just can't thank you enough. I know Andy just couldn't be happy. Thank you. Let's do one last. Yes, absolutely. I'm not good at talking for people. Um, I'm Mandy. I'm Andy's stepdaughter. He was the dad every little girl wanted. And I lost him for a long time. But his family was more my family. My family definitely was. And they taught me how to love, how to be a good person, how to be a good mother. My family always encouraged me and stood behind me and believed in me. And when we got into contact again this year, when he talked to my daughters for the first time, he was so happy. And he only got to meet my oldest daughter once at Teresa's house. And he was really looking forward to meeting them and seeing me. I didn't get a chance to do that. Before you passed, um, I was really upset about that. But this man just loved me. And my mother so much. And I just can't explain to you what it felt like to talk to somebody after. You haven't talked to them in years. And it was right back to him being my dad. And he was just the best. Man, I ever knew. I just felt like I had to say that. Any, anybody else? Well, we want to thank everybody for coming on behalf of the family and we want to thank all the great musicians that showed up today. We want to leave you with these words. You can shed tears that he's gone or you can smile because he lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he will come back or you can open your eyes and see all that he has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see him or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him and only that he is gone, or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what he would want. Smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. Thank you all so much for coming. Please enjoy the rest of the music. God bless. And as we do with anything in the entertainment business, the greatest gift you can give an entertainer is a standing ovation. So I invite you to stand and let's applaud. And all of these great musicians. Thank you to this wonderful man right here. We love him so much, and he has been, we have been family for so long, and he is always just the best of the best. We'll always be here. We'll always be here. And thank you so much. You're welcome again. We'll all get together. Anytime. Anytime. Play us something, Keith. All right. We've just begun. They go die in the sun. 
He was beaten like him and me, free as a dove, conceived in love. Sun's gonna shine above. Even though we ain't got money, walk so in love with your honey. Everything bring a chain of love. Drink it all up, love it when you bring your love. If your father held your mind, better take it home. Don't live alone, try to earn what lovers own. Even though we ain't got money, I'm so in love with you, honey. And my blood 
and run coals and hay. My name is Sue. How do you do? Now you are gonna die! Well, I hit him once right between the eyes and he went down and to my surprise, come up with a knife and he cut off it took my ear. So I busted a chair right across his teeth and went through the wall out into the street, kicking in the gouging in the mud and the blood and the beer. Well, I fought tougher, man. But I really don't remember when. He kicked like a mule and he bit like a crocodile. I heard him laugh and I heard him cuss. He went for his gun, but I drew mine first. And he stood there in the street. I seen him smile. He said, son, this world is rough. You're gonna make it. You gotta be tough. And I knew I wouldn't be around to hit you long. You get tough or die, and you know that name is what makes you strong. Ah, you just fought one hell of a fight. I know you hate me, and you have the right to kill me now. I wouldn't blame you if you do. But you ought to thank me before I die for the gravel in your gut and the spit in your eye. I'm that mangy snake that named you soon. Joe or JT, anything but, anything but Sue, that's an awful name. Oh, 
I challenge you to do a two minute song. Two minute song. Dead skunk in the middle of the road. Dead skunk in the middle of the road. Dead skunk in the middle of the road. Stinking the high high head. Well, you got your dead cat, you got your dead dog. of life as the strangest ending song in the world. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. God bless. Keep Andy in your hearts. Bye-bye. Thank you.